I'm taking you now to Buffalo, New York, where police officials are discussing a mass shooting that happened in a supermarket. CBS News has confirmed at least 10 people are dead, more are injured. Let's listen. Alan, let me know when we're good. Go ahead. Mayor Brown. What started out as a beautiful day in the city of Buffalo has turned into a terrible day and one of tremendous heartbreak for every member of our community. We have suffered a mass shooting with multiple casualties and several people injured. This is the worst nightmare that any community can face. And we are hurting and we are seething right now as a community. The depth of pain uh, that families are feeling and that all of us are feeling right now cannot even be explained. Uh, some of us had the opportunity to provide comfort to some of the families but needless to say, there is no comfort at this time. We are pleased that a shooter is in custody. Uh, the person responsible for the tragic events of today uh, is in custody. You will get more details in a moment. I want to thank all of the law enforcement agencies at the federal, state, county, and city level, all of the agencies that have responded. Uh, Buffalo is known as the city of good neighbors nationally and internationally. This is a community where people love each other. The shooter was not from this community. In fact, the shooter traveled hours from outside this community to perpetrate this crime on the people of Buffalo, a day when people were enjoying the sunshine, enjoying family, enjoying friends, all manner of happy activities, people in a supermarket shopping and bullets raining down on them, people's lives being snuffed out in an instant for no reason. I have to say that this particular top supermarket is near and dear to my heart. It's one that I worked years ago to help bring to this community. It's one that I patronize from time to time, my family patronizes from time to time, and some of the victims of this shooter's attack are people that all of us standing up here know. So this is a day of great pain for our community. I want to uh, just recognize uh, some of those that are with us today before I turn things over to our police commissioner, Joseph Grimaglio, to give you more detail. I uh, want to recognize County Executive Mark Polencar's Erie County Executive um, uh, Congressman Brian Higgins, Council President, Buffalo City Council President Darius Pridgen, Erie County Legislature Chairwoman April Baskin, Erie County Legislator Howard Johnson. I want to recognize uh, Governor Kathy Hochul uh, uh, and thank her for her calls. Uh, Governor staff is with us now, and uh, the governor is flying back into town and will be here sometime after 7 o'clock. I want to recognize Attorney General Letitia James, uh, who has also called, and we have also received calls from the White House. Uh, again, uh, this is a day of great sadness uh, for all of us in the city of Buffalo. Uh, to provide you with um, more detail, I want to turn things over to Buffalo Police Commissioner Joseph Gramalia. Thank you, Mayor. At approximately 2.30 today, an individual who the mayor stated is not from this area and is from hours away drove to the Buffalo, went to 1275 Jefferson Avenue to the Tops Market. He exited his vehicle 
He was very heavily armed. He had tactical gear. He had a tactical helmet on. He had a camera that he was live streaming what he was doing. The individual exited his car and engaged four individuals. He shot four people in the parking lot. Three of those were deceased. One individual uh, at this time is surviving the injury. The individual went inside, as I said, he was an 18-year-old white male, walked into the store and began engaging customers inside the store. One of the individuals inside the store is a security guard, a beloved security guard, who was a retired Buffalo police officer, a hero in our eyes, engaged the suspect, fired multiple shots, struck the suspect, but because he had heavily armed, uh, armored plating on, uh, that bullet had no round. The suspect engaged our retired officer and he was ultimately uh, shot and deceased at the scene. He continued to work his way through the store. Um, ultimately, um, he worked his way back towards the front of the store. Buffalo police immediately respond, engage the suspect in the uh, vestibule of the store. And at that point, the suspect put the gun to his own neck. Buffalo police personnel, two patrol officers, uh, talked the suspect into dropping the gun. He dropped the gun, took off some of his tactical gear, surrendered at that point and he was led outside, um, put in a police car, and transported to Buffalo Police Headquarters. So as we said, a total of 13 people were shot today, 10 deceased at the scene, and three sustained um, non-life-threatening injuries. It appears to be non-life-threatening injuries at that point. Uh, four in total were store employees. One of those was the security guard who has worked at that location for a very long time, um, and uh, you know many officers are on scene here knew him quite well and uh, the rest of the victims are customers of the store. Um, you know, as the mayor said, this, is, this, this uh, tragic incident by someone who is not a part of our community, does not live here. Um, we'll let uh, some of the other agencies get into the information that's been posted online, and I will turn this over at this point first to our Erie County Sheriff, John Garcia. I would like to thank all of the agencies uh, we have a very, very close working relationship with every level of government, every level of law enforcement, uh, and everybody was immediately calling and responding. We had a command post set up, and everybody is asking what we can do and how can we pitch in. Uh, the individuals from several hours away, the New York State Police and the FBI, are investigating that part of the crime as well. So I will turn this over at this point to Erie County Sheriff John Garcia. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Gramalia. As your sheriff and on behalf of the uh, men and women of the Erie County Sheriff's Office, our condolences to the victims and their families. From a law enforcement standpoint, the Erie County Sheriff's Office responded, boots on the ground, deputies, investigators, our helicopter in the air, our uh, SWAT team on standby. And as Commissioner Gramalia said, we are working together every single day to keep the community safe. This was pure evil. It was straight up racially motivated hate crime from somebody outside of our community, outside of the city of Good Neighbors, as the mayor said, coming into our community and trying to inflict that evil upon us. I urge everyone to stay calm and uh, we are there to protect uh, the citizens of um, Erie County and Buffalo, and we'll be out there along with the uh, City of Buffalo Police Department patrolling. And um, again, my condolences to the family, and um, this person was a pure evil. So, thank you. I'm Stephen Belongia. I'm the special agent in charge of the FBI's Buffalo field office. We stand here today confronted with feelings of anger, shock, confusion, fear, and compassion. We feel motivated to help and relieve the anguish of those who were killed and injured today and their families and friends. These victims did not, did not deserve this. They were doing what we do every day, going to the grocery store or simply, um, simply doing our jobs. The FBI is working this case jointly with our partners, with the Buffalo PD, and our other federal, state, and local partners. We are investigating this incident as both a hate crime and a case of racially motivated violent extremism. Hate crimes fall within the FBI's Criminal Investigative Division, 
and racially motivated violent extremism cases fall within the FBI's counterterrorism division within our domestic terrorism section. The FBI is providing all necessary resources, both locally and nationally, to investigate this matter. We will not stop until every lead is investigated, every piece of evidence is analyzed, and until we understand how and why this horrible tragedy and crime occurred. Our thoughts and our prayers are with the family and the victims uh, who died today. I'm Trini Ross. I'm the United States Attorney for the Western District of New York. I want to start by saying my thoughts and heartfelt prayers go to the family, the victims, and the community that had to suffer this great and unnecessary tragedy today. We're working with our state federal and local law enforcement partners, as, you, as you've already heard from, to ensure that justice is brought to this community, to those victims, to their families. The United States Attorney's Office will be investigating this case along with our law enforcement partners as a hate crime and domestic violent extremists. I'm in touch with the highest levels of the Department of Justice. Resources will be put behind this investigation Whatever we need, we will not stop until justice is brought to this community, those families, and the victims of this horrific crime. I can assure you as the United States Attorney, I will bring whatever resources we need to this community to make sure that justice is done. This should never happen to anyone in any community. It surely shouldn't happen on a beautiful Saturday when people are just shopping and going through normal life events. We will ensure that the perpetrator of this victim is given justice, and justice will be done for this community. I'm the last. No, no, I'm going. I'm not going. I'm not going. All right. Uh, let me first start out by saying thank you. Thank you to all my partners in law enforcement here um, from the federal, state, local level. Uh, the, the amount of work that's been done so far has been extraordinary. The amount of information that's been gathered so far has been outstanding. And for everyone involved here, from Trini to BPD to the state police to the sheriff, uh, I cannot thank enough. We here in Erie County, though, um, are not waiting. Uh, I have already called a judge, uh, Judge Hanna, to come downtown immediately and arraign this individual. So within the next hour, uh, this individual will be arraigned on a, a charge of murder in the first degree. I, I am not even going to mention his name right now, uh, one, because the arraignment hasn't occurred, but more importantly, I don't want to give him any celebrityism at all right now. I don't want to give him anything right now that puts attention on him and the alleged, and again, I say alleged, despicable acts that were committed today in our great city. So I'm not going to give you his name right now. Um, I'll give it to you after, we do, after I issue a press release, after he's been arraigned. But Judge Han is downtown right now. BPD and my office are drafting the charges right now, uh, and he will be arraigned tonight. And that charge of murder in the first degree carries with it uh, a life without parole sentence. Now, there are two aspects of the murder in the first degree charge that potentially could be charged here. The one, obviously, is crystal clear right now. There is a certain subdivision of the murder in the first degree that accounts for multiple individuals getting shot and killed, which is what we have here. As uh, the commissioner said, uh, we have 10 individuals uh, who have unfortunately lost their life, uh, three that are, um, uh, have been shot but have, are uh, going to survive, hopefully. The, um, there is also a second uh, subsection 
of the murder in the first degree that has a racial component to it. Obviously, um, we will investigate that further. Um, I want to make sure right now, though, when I arraign him tonight, my clock is ticking as far as my felony hear uh, a hearing date, which will be uh, five days from now. So I want to make sure that I have the best charge right now to hold him in custody uh, and to get this matter moving forward uh, before I add any other charges on. Uh, but I can, and if those charges uh, are applicable, which I think they may be, they will be added on. They're not going to increase the punishment at all um, uh, from a state standpoint. From a state standpoint, it is um, life without parole, and that's as high as we can go. So uh, I, I also want to thank um, my district attorneys across the country uh, who have been texting me and calling me for the past two hours. Uh, I thank you for your thoughts. I thank you for your prayers. But more importantly, uh, I want everyone to know that my thoughts and prayers uh, are with the family members uh, who have lost loved ones today in the city of Buffalo. We'll next hear from County Executive Mark Polencars and then Congressman Brian Higgins. And then I'll take any questions at the end. As has been said by all the others, today is one of the saddest days in the city of Buffalo and Erie County's history. All of the county's resources have been made available as necessary to assist in this unfortunate, horrific act. Uh, as the mayor noted, we are the city of good neighbors, and we, of course, are not defined by this act, but how we will come together to support the families of those who have lost. And, and on behalf of the people of Erie County, I want to offer my, my deepest condolences to those who have lost a loved one today. Uh, Erie County mental health uh, counselors, as well as our partners from the mental health community, are already on site to assist those uh, who may have lost a loved one or those who were a witness to this horrific crime. And as we know, we will, we will offer all resources possible from all parts of county government, whether of course it's the sheriff's office, the district attorney's offices, or the other departments, that to ensure that not only do this individual be prosecuted for this horrible crime and, and brought to the full extent of, the, of justice, but that we also can heal as a community from this traumatic experience. Well, thank you very much, and let me just say to all of my colleagues in government, our law enforcement community, the eyes of the nation are on Buffalo, and those eyes are full of tears, and they're full of sympathy for the violence and the tragedy that's been exacted on good, innocent people who went to work this morning, said goodbye to their loved ones, expecting fully to return home tonight. Ten people are not going to return home. Their loss, their death, is a loss and a death that's exacted on this community. Our sympathy goes to the families, our thoughts go to the families and to the victims. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of my mayor, uh, my county executive, my district attorney, the U.S. attorney, and all of the elected officials that are here today in the law enforcement community who, is, who have coordinated this effort in a highly effective way. So this is uh, something that hopefully we will learn from, something that will serve as a basis from which enacting policy at the federal level uh, to get guns out of the hands of those people who should not have guns in their hands. And we hope that time will heal. And we are a good community. We are a giving community. Uh, we love our people. We love our diversity. And again, these people were people that for the past 24 months were working in service, in service of others, and people who we called our heroes. And our heroes have been taken down today uh, without justification. So as we conclude, before we open up for questions, again, I want to express that our deepest and most heartfelt condolences are with the families of those uh, who lost their lives today uh, tragically and unnecessarily. Uh, if you would bear with us, we will open up for questions, and then we will conclude in prayer with Father Seil, uh, the fire department chaplain, and our council president, Darius Bridget. May I ask you to close your eyes? 